Hi, my name's uh, Kenny. I've uh, known Catherine uh, for a few years. She's a, a friend of my, my daughter, Sarah. And uh, she asked me just to put some thoughts together on um, what we might call the problem of suffering. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm speaking to. Uh, I know you're younger people and uh, that some uh, of you, maybe all of you, um, have faith in Jesus. But even when we believe in Jesus and believe in God, um, the suffering that there is in the world and maybe the suffering that we've experienced in our own lives can, can be a difficult thing to, to come to terms with. Uh, if God is loving, if he's powerful, why do these things happen? It's a, a big subject and uh, I just want to speak for a few minutes in the hope that what I say might give you some things to maybe talk about to, together. Uh, I want to just uh, remind you of a story in the Bible that I think might help to take us uh, some way ahead with, with what we're talking about. It's a story about John the Baptist and uh, you can read it for yourself in Luke chapter 7. And maybe I don't know how, how you'll use this, uh, this wee recording. Uh, maybe you would want to stop it now and read in Luke chapter 7 and then uh, pick it up again. But in case you don't want to stop and read, let me just tell you what the story says. Uh, John the Baptist had told everybody that uh, Jesus was the king who'd come uh, into the earth from heaven to put everything right. And yet in Luke chapter 7, we find that he himself is in prison and he's there unjustly and actually ends up being beheaded he ends up being executed and in that uh, place he starts to wonder was i right about jesus uh, he had really said everything is going to change the way he described it was the axe is being laid to the root of the tree in other words jesus was going to topple everything that was unjust and uh, he was going to make everything perfect. And yet now the opposite seemed to be the case because corrupt rulers were still in power. The Romans were still in charge with all their cruelty. And here was God's prophet who'd, who'd pointed everybody to Jesus uh, facing injustice, suffering in a cell and about to suffer execution. And he's confused by it all. Did I get it right? Am I wrong? Is, is my faith in Jesus misplaced? And Jesus actually, um, John the Baptist sends some of his followers to Jesus to ask, well, are you really the king who's going to put everything right? The king from heaven, the Messiah? Or did I get it wrong? And what Jesus sends the messengers back with is, tell John the Baptist what's happening. Tell him about the signs of my kingdom being established on the earth. Tell him that blind people are seeing and lame people are walking. And I understand how he's finding it confusing. But tell him that the blessing of God will rest upon those who don't get offended by the way I'm going about things. And in Jesus' reply, we're taken to what I think is a really important mystery to understand. Because Jesus, like John, had said that the kingdom of heaven is now being established on the earth. Now, when you think of heaven, what do you think of? Well, the Bible actually gives us a glimpse of heaven in the last chapters of the Bible. It's a place of no more sickness, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. And yet Jesus actually came and said, that kingdom is not just at the end of everything when you die. I'm actually bringing something of that kingdom into the earth now. So heaven isn't only coming after all the misery is over. I'm actually bringing something of the kingdom of heaven into now. And there were signs of that, because remember in heaven there's no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more tears, no more death. And what does Jesus do? He heals the sick. 
and three occasions that we know of, he actually raised the dead. So there really were signs that this kingdom, where they'd be absolutely all suffering, be wiped away, was beginning to be established. And yet here's the mystery. Did Jesus raise all the dead? No, he didn't. Did he put an end to all suffering? No, he didn't. Why is that? Let me just take a diversion here. I don't know if, ever, if you've ever been hill walking. I used to be in the cadet corps and uh, we used to go hill walking with maps and a compass and so on. And I remember one time where we misread the map and what we thought was one mountain top that we were heading towards actually turned out to be two mountain tops with a valley in between. And so the climb was, took much longer than we thought it was going to take because we'd not realised the two peaks and this valley in between. And what Jesus, when he talked about the kingdom of heaven, he really taught that the kingdom is not just coming with one peak, but with two. And the first peak was Jesus' ministry on earth. And the second peak is the Bible actually teaches that he'll come again. And when he comes again, then that's the final and full establishment of his kingdom, when all suffering will be wiped away. But when he came for the first time, and before that valley that we are living in now, and before the next mountain peak when he comes again to end all suffering, when he came the first time, his ministry was full of signs that that second peak that we're waiting for is definitely on its way. So Jesus, he taught this mystery that the kingdom of heaven that we're all waiting for in the future, he said it begins now, but it doesn't come in all its glorious fullness until when Jesus returns. And that's why there's signs of the kingdom. It's here. Can you get hold of this? It's here. But it's something we're still waiting for. It's here, but it's not here in all its fullness. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I mean. Because the kingdom of heaven is near, miraculous things can happen here and now. I remember a lady, I used to be a Church of Scotland minister in Thurso, and uh, she had very advanced liver disease and the professor in charge of her called all her family because she only had a couple of days to live. But you know what? Here's the amazing thing. The church in Thurso gathered to pray for her and through the night, this is what happened. She felt there was like a crackle of electricity in the air and she heard God's voice speaking to her and saying, in two days time, you'll be totally healed. The next day she was worse than ever and all the family gathered round and she said, it's all right, it's all right, God's told me tomorrow I'm going to be healed. And you know what? The next day she woke up totally, utterly, 100% healed. You see, because God's kingdom is near to us right now, heaven is near to us right now, the kingdom of heaven, the king of heaven, Jesus, is alive and with us now. That means that there can be signs of heavenly, wonderful things. But remember what I said, the kingdom of heaven is here now, but we're still waiting for it. And we're in that valley in between. And that means that sometimes there's wonderful things, heavenly things can happen. But it means that we're not out of all the suffering that there is on earth yet. And uh, so let me give you another example. I had a friend called Andy. He went into the hospital and uh, went in with a sore back and he actually died within, I think, 10 days of going into hospital. Lots of people were praying for him. And as we gathered around his hospital bed just after he died, I remember, have you ever seen the Chronicles of Narnia? You should watch it if you haven't. 
and the children are coming back out of Narnia into our world, as it were. And they start to remember words that they've never used before uh, for a long time, like spare um and lamp post and things like that. And as we stood around Andy's bed just after he died, I felt the Lord saying to me, you know what, in a million years from now, we'll be gathered with Andy in the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. And somebody will say, Andy, was there not a time when we stood round your hospital bed when you, were, when you had cancer? And I think somebody will start to say, cancer, hospital. Just the way the children said, spare room and lamppost. And then somebody will say, these are old world words. We've not used these, year, these words here for a million years. Now, here's the thing. We would prayed for Andy with the same faith and love as we prayed for that lady who recovered. This is the mystery in the valley between the first mountain peak where Jesus initiated his kingdom and the second mountain peak when he comes again and every trace of suffering will be removed forever. The kingdom of heaven is near to us now. But remember, Jesus still teaches us to pray for it still to come. Thy kingdom come. It's here and there are signs of it. And we don't understand all the mysteries. Why did that lady recover? Why did Andy die? I don't think there's any full answer to that. But Jesus says it's the way it is until he comes again. So that's the, if you like, the, the theology, what the Bible teaches about the times that we live in now. But here's the proof that it really matters to us. Jesus sends us in this valley time to tell people about his kingdom, to show the love and the care and the support and help of his kingdom, to pray for people for the kingdom of heaven to touch them in some way here and now, and to do acts of kindness and care and compassion that prove that the care and love of the God of heaven is near to us right now, even in the valley, as we wait for the mountain. So here's how you know whether your problem with suffering is a real one, or maybe an excuse for pushing God away. If it's a real one, you'll be involved in doing kingdom of heaven things. If suffering really bothers you, then with God's help, you'll actually be doing something about it. You'll be showing in some way, trying to help others know that the care and love of the God of heaven is close. And sometimes that will mean miracle for them and sometimes it will mean help and support so the challenge of a suffering world is not simply a challenge about belief it's a challenge about living what are we doing with Jesus help with God's help what are we doing about the suffering around us to show that God is close, to show that he does care? And though in the valley we might not be able to understand all the mysteries, nonetheless, we're on God's side in the valley. We're on Jesus' side. And we want to help people know that God is close and the God of heaven is close right now. We want to bring to him, to, to others, his help, his care, his love to help them in the valley. And we can remind them that they can wait with us for a day when every tear will be gone and all suffering will be removed. 
and uh, that's something to hope for and to pray for. So there's some thoughts. I might do another wee vlog sometime to take up some more aspects of this uh, the question of suffering. So I hope this might help you to speak among yourselves. And yep, that's about it for today. Bye for now.